a 3D printed pump action Mega XL revolver, a groovy new one handed stringer, and a major gel blaster brand dries up. I'm Grim. I'm Vile Mods. I'm Maritime Foam. And I'm KT of Family Foam Sport. We are your hosts. All that and more in the 28th episode of the Foam News Collective. Be sure to like the video, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get right into the news. This is my boomstick! And soon it could be yours too. The FLP-04 Ogre is a hipfire 5-shot Mega XL Springer with quick swappable cylinders made by 3D designer Flip Flop Foam Factory. That's a lot of words. Firing Mega XL downrange at an impressive 80 FPS, the Ogre is sure to be the bane of an avid shield bearer. For those of you wanting to make one for yourself, Silver Fox Industries are selling hardware kits for 55 United States dollars, and files are available for free over on Flip Flop's printables page. Links down below. It's time to party and celebrate the release of the Maraca by Lidl Dynamics. The Maraca is a new talon-fed break action stringer design that shares a lot with its namesake instrument. Both can be used one-handed with just a flick of the wrist, and both make a satisfying noise when you shake them. Unlike the percussion instrument, Lidl's Maraca can shoot darts in the realm of 110 feet per second, depending entirely on your string setup, and can be 3D printed on a 180 size bed such as that of the Prusa Mini. Files cost about $7 on the Lidl Dynamics Etsy page, link down below. Domachevsky of Genko Megaworks and creator of the X-Shot Reshell 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, has now come out with number seven. Whew. A bolt action variant to the lineup. While Domachevsky was originally known for big, loud flywheel LED monsters that could mow through darts and your wallet, he has been focused for some time now on all these cool X-Shot Micro reskins. A series of low cost and creative plinkers requiring a $5 Canadian, sorry, X-Shot Micro and a file set off Etsy from Genco Megaworks costing $7.62 Canadian. These are very accessible projects that don't require sourcing a bunch of exotic hardware from who knows where. Everything you need is in the X-Shot Micro. If you don't have a 3 3D printer, check out creators like Xbox Games, Foamdemic, or uh, me. Performance of all of these blasters with the air restrictor removed is 75 to 85 FPS. And I think any 3D printed project made easy for beginners is an awesome addition to the hobby. Here's to X-Shot Reshell number eight. Lever action? Even though there have been multiple Chronomag variants over the years, creators like Performance Mods over on Etsy are still pushing the limits of this pistol powerhouse with the release of their Chronomag mod kit files. This packed file set gives a slew of new performance parts, such as a redesigned plunger pad to remove more dead space, an O-ring shim for better sealing, and even two different pushers capable of 250 FPS for the skinny breech or 300 for the high flow version. Performance wasn't the only thing in mind with this kit, as it also includes two different T-pulls for different releases of Cronuses, a top pick rail, and even a safety switch delete to customize it further. All these options and customizable part files will set you back for just under 14 USD, and of course, are linked below. When it was readily available on shelves, the rival Knockout became a prominent platform for mods and reshells due to its compact power. Creators like Xbox Games and Meeker offer kits to turn knockouts into Mega XL or Demolisher rocket launchers, or single them into inline clips. With the knockout out of production and becoming harder to find, what can we do to keep these designs alive? Well, YouTube creator Aaron Planks found one possible answer with a new product on Taobao, a full metal lower receiver replacement for the rival knockout. Since it's designed to exactly replace the grip and power system of the blaster, it should be immediately compatible with all the existing aftermarket mods and could potentially even take higher powered springs. Available both in pink and silver, it has one big downside. It costs about a hundred United States dollars. The press-on P-Car and B-Car that were seen on Nexus and Aeon Pro X at Toy Fair EU are now available from Dart Zone's web store well in advance of the blaster's launch. 
Dart Zone's P car is very similar to Worker's, but with six threads instead of Worker's four threads, and with an additional 10 millimeters of thread length. More impressive still is their modular B car, with its removable cap and bearing inserts, allowing the hobby to make their own twist variants, as well as muzzle covers. At the surprisingly low price of only $20 for a pack, with only one of each, these are definitely going to be a tough value for competitors to beat. Community members have already started receiving units in hand, and results of early tests are looking quite promising, especially at this price point. Links, as always, will be down in the description. Around February 14th, 2024, Primetime Toys' official website for their Hydro Strike Gel Ball Blaster line disappeared from the internet, along with any mention of the brand from their main site. Navigating to the Hydro Strike webpage results in an account suspended message, and linking to those pages results in a 404. The website for Gel Zone Pro is still active with Hydro Strike products listed. Without an official statement from Primetime, we can't say for sure if Hydro Strike is truly discontinued or being folded into another brand but with contributors reporting emptying gel shelves in stores across the U.S., this may be another sign of the end for gel blasters. We recently reported on a series of patent lawsuits between Hasbro and other players in the gel blaster industry, as well as the removal of gel bead and blaster products from shelves by certain retailers. With all of these legal issues, gel may no longer be worth the fight for mid-sized companies like Primetime. Survival Fest 2024 Operation Fool's Gold, happening on May 31st weekend, has announced their convention venue. Taking place at the Nittany Valley Sports Center, events are going to include a vendor floor, there's going to be a blaster skills competition, and an indoor arena HVZ, which is a great place to learn all the rules about all the special zombies and all the things that they're gonna throw at you. They'll get you all ready for the big HVZ at Pennsylvania State University. I attended Survival Fest last year and I had a blast. Expect a surprisingly detailed story, lots of different zombies, and make sure you pack some Mega, some Mega XL, some socks, because they're going to make you use it against all sorts of creatures, I bet. Big shout out to Michael Lasik, game director, for always making everyone feel welcome, and you can meet all the amazing mods at hvzsurvivalfest.com. And now for Half Lengths. Last available as a Walmart online exclusive, the Dart Zone Pro Mark II in orange is returning for a limited time. It's currently available direct from Dart Zone for $49.99. In the Discord, Buff Daddy shared a few pages of Hasbro's 2024 lookbook. While most of the nerf stuff inside is things we've seen already, we do get our first look at the Gelfire Uproar with its bulbous hopper. Shanye and Phantom Tech's Little Hamster, a beefed up injection molded version of the leaf, is now available for pre-order from Out of Darts and Silver Fox Industries, and expected to be available from Blaster Time in March. The little hamster should hit around 120 FPS and is very affordable at just 20 US dollars. Silver Fox Industries is now offering threaded Kuriaka barrels for the Worker Harrier and Seagull in Cyan and Magenta. These Pantone pipes come in four different lengths, any of which will cost you $20. Lidl Dynamics teased a new project, a string-powered minigun-style blaster with a hopper that feeds and ejects clips of half darts. This project is still in progress, no release date is projected, but it's worth keeping an eye on. On Reddit, Hotcoin also teased a new design, a funky little string-assisted dart-throwing catapult. No word on whether this design will ever see release, but the hobby always needs more weird stuff, so hopefully. Yao Yao also took to Reddit to show off the pre-beta of their upcoming Hammer Cannon Nightingale Mag Springer Pistol. They expect that with the right setup, this blaster could hit 150 to 200 FPS, but they're still tweaking the design before open beta. Silly Butts also shared that the Fox Bat, his mag and grip Springer pistol, is entering a second beta period. Sporting a smooth look and a skewer T-pole, the Fox Bat is expected to release around April. If you enjoyed Null's funny parody nerf stickers with the names of different brands, you'll love his new designs parodying the Strifex logo with variations for the Aeon, Nexus, Deploy, and Maverick plus a sticker for your Pro Strife Y. Perfect for your flywheel deploy or a gear up Mayfly, all are available on Redbubble. This episode, my community crosshairs are on Vandernerf's modified Moto Strike and Mastodon that both hit an impressive 130 FPS using Out of Dart's new Proton flywheels. 
Vandernerf took the time to modify currently existing printed cages and make use of these new flywheels, and even gave the Motor Strike a good shakedown at an event. With me being a huge fan of the Mega Ammo type and seeing these flywheelers get the love and attention they deserve, it makes me excited to dive into my own builds and hope to see more cage options available in the future. For Community Crosshairs, I'm zoomed in on a new Nerf podcast, Fast Tracked by competitive player, known hype beast, and Women of Nerf founder, Archer. With her first episode, she's off to a great start, interviewing a pair of notable competitive play referees, a job that is underrepresented in current hobby discussion. With quality editing and production value, awesome guests, and great discussion, this podcast is definitely worth adding to your rotation. My community crosshairs are sighted in on YouTuber Foam Mando. He has a real passion for brightly colored tactical gear. Noticing how much of what's available to people is black and dark and kind of intimidating, he set out to make a whole bunch of stuff to fit a whole bunch of blasters in different colored materials. He has plans to make some digital files available with some of his templates to make it easier for you to make some custom gear for your things. He's planning some YouTube tutorials, keep an eye out for those, and he'll be doing some commissions. This was custom made to fit my modded Ultra 2, and he's even working on a custom holder for the Gauntlet XL when it's in pistol mode. <laughs> Keep up all the awesome work. For this episode, I've got my crosshair locked on Banshee, a spectacular integration done by Grim Reaper 2458. The build speaks for itself, each detail telling a story of how the blaster came to be. From its roaring triple fang internals, logos and detailing, to the weathering job on the paint, you can tell care was put into making this blaster. Did I mention the integration is quite slick too? This one really caught my eye. Well done. And that's it for the news. Huge thanks to our special guest host, Maritime Foam. He's on a break from making his own content right now, but you won't regret checking out all the great stuff he's made for his channel and for the World Foam Alliance. Be sure to catch our podcast with guest Luke from Out of Darts, where we'll be talking about the overlap between business and play and playing our new trivia game. Big thanks to our Ko-Fi subscribers, everyone who's bought merch, our Discord mods, and everyone contributing to the show. Be sure to stick around for our new credit scroll at the end with the bloopers. You might see your name. That's it for now. See you again in two weeks with another episode. The press on P car and B car that were seen on the Nexus and Aeon Pro X at Toy Fair EU are now near, near, near. <laughs> and Woman of Nerf found women, women of Woman of Nerf. There's hopefully more than one. For Community Crosshairs, I'm zoomed in. No word on whether this design will see the light of day of release. The light of day of release of the sun of something. With quick swappable swap, quick ah, swappable, swap, swap. Swap as in swap force. Swap. That's it for now. See you again in another two weeks. With. Damn it. And twist variants as well as muzzle. Muzzle? Muzzle? Muzzer? Oh my god. Muzzle covers. Combined with the recent removal of gel bead products from shelves by major retailers, it seems that gel may no longer be worth the fight for mid sized companies like Primetime. And that's fine, it can go away. Stuff's garbage, don't care about it. Get out of here. What's next, maracas. Hold on, forgot the maracas.